There lived a grasshopper and a butterfly. The grasshopper decided to introduce a new member of his family, his baby nymph. Butterfly noticed that nymph looked very similar to the grasshopper and was very excited to introduce his new member of the family, his baby lava. But here the grasshopper noticed that lava looked nothing like the butterfly. How is that? As usual, you are in bio world where I'm going to help resolve that question for you. Insects grow through a process known as metamorphosis. There is complete metamorphosis and incomplete metamorphosis. The butterfly does complete metamorphosis where at each stage of its life cycle, it takes a different shape. The butterfly lays the egg and when the egg hatches, a larva is produced and that larva will then go to sleep in the form of a pupa and when the pupa awakes, it becomes an adult butterfly. Whereas the grasshopper does incomplete metamorphosis where once the egg hatches, a mini grasshopper is produced and this mini grasshopper will grow into the adult grasshopper. Now both these processes are controlled by a set of hormones. But before I introduce you to the hormones, Let's look at the STPM syllabus. We are in 10.4, Growth Curves and Patterns of Growth. And we have actually covered Part B in my video on growth Part 1. However, I have not introduced intermittent growth in insects because I wanted to discuss it together with the process of egg disease and metamorphosis. So let's begin. I'll start by introducing the glands in the insect that are responsible for hormone secretion. First, there's the brain. And behind the brain, we have two structures called the corpus cardiacum and the corpus alatum. Below the mouth, we have the prothoracic gland. Inside the brain, there is a special group of cells called the neurosecretory cells. These cells are sensitive to the environment. So, depending on the suitability of the environment for the growth of the insect, this cell will secrete the neurosecretory hormone NH. NH is not stored in the brain. Instead, NH will be transported by the axons of the neurosecretory cell to the corpus cardiacum. So corpus cardiacum will store NH and release NH when it is necessary. Please remember, corpus cardiacum does not secrete NH. Now NH will stimulate corpus alatum and the prothoracic gland. So when stimulated, the corpus alatum will secrete the hormone JH, short for juvenile hormone, also known as neotonin. NH can also stimulate the prothoracic gland. When stimulated, the prothoracic gland will secrete the hormone agdisol. Now, the corpus cardiacum and the corpus alatum are side by side. So, the NH hormone can easily diffuse to corpus alatum. But, the corpus cardiacum and the prothoracic gland are quite a distance away. So, NH will first have to diffuse into the hemolymph, that is the liquid in the body of the insect, and then NH will be transported via the hemolymph to the prothoracic gland. Now, you know the function of NH, that is to stimulate corpus alatum and the prothoracic gland. Let's find out what's the function of JH and agdisol.
Once again, I refresh you that the brain will secrete the hormone NH, which is stored in the corpus cardiacum. And then NH, when released from corpus cardiacum, will go on to stimulate corpus allatum to secrete JH and prothoracic gland to secrete agdison. Let's see what is the function of the juvenile hormone. From the word juvenile, you can understand that this hormone will prevent the insect from growing up. So it inhibits maturity and it does this by suppressing or blocking the genes that code for adult characteristics. So this way, the butterfly or the grasshopper will not be able to become an adult in the presence of JH. Instead, what happens is JH will activate genes that will code for the insect to remain as a nymph if we are talking about incomplete metamorphosis or to remain as a larva if we are talking about complete metamorphosis. Meanwhile, Agdison does the exact opposite. Agdison will activate genes that will code for the growth of the insect. So these enzymes will promote the process of ectasis, which we will see next when discussing incomplete metamorphosis. If we were to measure the growth of insects, we would only be able to measure the growth in insects that carry out incomplete metamorphosis because the insects have the same shape throughout their life cycle. We cannot measure the growth of insects that carry out complete metamorphosis because at every stage of its life cycle, it takes on a different shape. Now, if I'm to measure the growth of this grasshopper from nymph to adult, I get what is known as an intermittent growth pattern. This is due to the fact that insects that carry out incomplete metamorphosis have hard chitinous exoskeleton. This exoskeleton will prevent the body of the insect from expanding. So that is why although the insect is growing, it will show no increase in length, although its weight will be increasing. So the stages where it is growing, but we are not seeing it in the length of its body, is called the instar stage. But at one stage we find that it suddenly increases in length. This stage is known as ectasis. During this stage, what happens is the insect actually ruptures its old exoskeleton and becomes free temporarily. That gives it enough time to expand its body and increase its length. So that is why on the same day, we have two different body lengths. So this process of egg disease is regulated by hormones. Let's look at how the hormone enables egg disease of the nymph. Firstly, the nymph will eat and drink a lot and this will cause the abdominal walls of the insect to stretch. Let me show you an outline of the insect to see this more easily. Now, as the abdominal wall stretches, there are receptors that will send a stimulus to the corpus cardiacum. Now, remember, corpus cardiacum is storing the neurosecretory hormone. So now that the corpus cardiacum is stimulated, corpus cardiacum will release the neurosecretory hormones into the hemolymph to be transported to the prothoracic gland. The prothoracic gland will begin to secrete the hormone actison. So remember, actison can activate genes that will code for the growth enzymes. So now the enzymes will enable the grasshopper 
to synthesize a new layer of cuticle under the old exoskeleton. This new layer of cuticle is not hard yet. So what happens next is the insect will have to remove its old exoskeleton so that the new exoskeleton will enable it to expand its body. It does this with the help of another hormone called the enclosure hormone. This hormone will stimulate the central nervous system of the insect to make it move. Okay, that is initiate motor activity so that it can remove the old exoskeleton. So this way, once the old exoskeleton is removed, the body can expand. Now, nymphs will carry out this agnesis process between four to five times before it can become an adult. Let's discuss complete metamorphosis. Complete metamorphosis will involve all three hormones, unlike incomplete metamorphosis. In incomplete metamorphosis, only the neurosecretory hormone and agdison were involved. But here, all three hormones are involved. That is, the neurosecretory hormones released by the corpus cardiacum, the juvenile hormone secreted by corpus allatum, and agdison secreted by the prothoracic gland. You will notice that I have intentionally drawn more juvenile hormone compared to agdison. That is because at the larva stage, the concentration of the juvenile hormone is higher than agdison. The juvenile hormone's function is to inhibit maturity. And at the same time, it also inhibits the role of agdison. So because of that, agdison is unable to transform the larva into an adult butterfly. But it is able to promote agdesis of the larva skin. You see, the larva will be eating a lot. And due to that, its body is going to expand. Its skin will tear. So fortunately, agdison will keep on producing new skin to protect the larva. Now, once the larva has reached its maximum size, the juvenile hormone levels will begin to decrease. So we find here, the neurosecretory hormones will not stimulate corpus allatum that much. So the juvenile hormone levels almost equals the actison hormone level. However, the juvenile hormone level is still able to inhibit the process of maturity, meaning that the butterfly cannot form yet. It will continue to inhibit agdison, but the inhibition is not that severe. So, agdison now will promote formation of a new type of skin, that is the pupa skin. This is the pupa skin. So it's as if the insect is going to sleep. But actually, there is a lot of transformation happening where enzymes are changing the structure of the larva to start forming the adult shape. As the transformation is happening inside the pupa, we find that slowly the levels of the juvenile hormone becomes nil. That means zero. Corpus allatum stops secreting the juvenile hormone. So in this way, agdison is not inhibited anymore. Agdison can function perfectly where it will start to activate genes for adult structure formation. And in this way, the adult structure of the butterfly appears and complete metamorphosis occurs. So now you know that being different is just biology. Until I meet you again, 
Bye-bye.